Good morning everybody on this Friday morning. Um, I hope the week's been good to you. And um, Josh Fox has asked me to do the daily vlog today. Um, so read along with me if you've got a Bible, if not just listen. And um, please comment if you've got any ideas or thoughts about this psalm. Um, so before we get into the psalm, I, um, I'd like to pray for us first. Heavenly Father, I just pray and thank you, Lord, for this time and being able to look look at your word. I pray for everyone that is listening and watching, and I pray that the words of this psalm will, um, will teach us something about you, your ways, encourage us, Lord, um, as we go forward um, from today onwards. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, Psalm 42 and Psalm 43. Some um, scholars think they're kind of, you know, just a long, a long psalm, but Psalm 43 does kind of stand on its own. It's very short. It's only five verses long, but we'll read, we'll read it first before we can kind of get in, get into it really. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. So if you um, have read Psalm 42 or heard um, last week's, there's a lot of Psalm 43 that there seems repeated um, from Psalm 2. Um, but we'll start... We'll start at the beginning and kind of look at um, and what the psalmist is saying. And from what we can see, the psalmist is, is very distressed, he's feeling oppressed with great inner turmoil and kind of pleading with God um, about, about the situation that he's in. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are my God and stronghold, but why have you rejected me? So my thoughts on this are, um, like I said, the psalmist is extremely feeling oppressed and probably quite depressed. Things are maybe coming against against him that aren't true. And that makes me think of situations maybe that we've been in, any of us, where maybe something has been said about us that isn't true or a situation. Um, and we really, really want to be vindicated. We want our case to be cleared and um, and our name cleared. And, and, and that's kind of what's coming across from the psalmist here. And I'm feeling very rejected. Um, you know, why have you rejected me? That's such a cry from the heart um, at this time for him. And I just, it makes me think about the times that we, we've, we're in situations ourselves when things aren't going well, or maybe we've prayed and hoped for something for a long time and it's never happened. And I think in these particular times at the moment, you know, when everything's upside down and lots of people are in difficult, very difficult situations um, that don't seem to be, be changing, um, we can also get into to feeling this way too, feeling that we're rejected, that God isn't listening and, and things like that. So that kind of comes across very strongly for me in this psalm in the beginning. He goes on to say, why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? So this real sense of oppression and not being listened to. Um, so it's quite, it's quite a psalm of lament initially. Um, and I think that's something that can resonate with all of us at different times in our lives, you know, when we're feeling this way. But then there's a, a kind of a shift here. Um, and the answer for the psalmist really is, Send forth your light and your truth, and let them guide me. So, 
despite feeling oppressed and depressed and um, desperate really, it's quite a desperate, desperate psalm. It's asking for, you know, for the light and the truth to come, to guide him really. Yeah, send forth your light and truth and let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. He wants to be where God is, as we do. We want an answer. We want, to, you know, he's looking for that answer. Um, and he's asking to send your light and truth. Because where there is light, light will always illuminate the darkness. Whatever is hidden, light, you know, when light shines, there you have the answer. There is the truth. So that is really what he's asking. And he says, I will go to the altar of God, my God. So that's really personal, isn't it? My God and my delight. So despite this feeling of, um, of frustration, oppression and abandonment almost, well, not almost, it is, why have you rejected me? He's really saying that, um, but if you will just guide me with your light and your truth, um, you know, you are my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp. Oh God, my God. So that's a really personal. And of course, that can be for us too, a really personal feeling. And on towards the end of the psalm, the psalmist starts to talk to his soul, as we saw previously in Psalm 42. He actually talks to his own soul by saying, Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. So sometimes I think this, this kind of says to me that even when we're going through a really, really difficult situation and we're feeling all those feelings, whether we're feeling depressed or anxious or worried um, and rejected, we can kind of take something really positive from from this psalm, despite it being um, a psalm of lament, um, by talking to our soul, you know, as the psalmist did. And he's saying, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him. And that kind of says to me, despite everything that's going on, despite what, how my emotions are feeling and what the situation looks like, and yet... I will praise him. And I think there's something really powerful um, about praising God in the middle of the storm, in the middle of problems, um, despite emotions, despite how we're feeling. When there's no particular answer, sometimes some of the most powerful prayers, and this is a prayer, um, is during praise, and yet I will praise him. And being able to talk to your soul, I think, is something really, really powerful. Um, so there is kind of a shift in this psalm from the, the pleading and the asking, please listen to me, why have you rejected me? You know, the psalmist feels able to just say exactly how he feels. And for me, I think that's, there's something about that, being, being able to be very real with God about how you really feel. Because often we can... Um, People will often ask us how we are and we can say, well, I'm fine. Or even if you're not feeling fine, I'm a little bit down. But there's something very special about being able to be very transparent and real with God. Because God can take that. God, can, God knows how you feel and he wants you to express how you feel. And I think this psalm is showing us how, you know, how the psalmist is able to do that. Uh, and say all those really difficult things like, why have you rejected me? I'm feeling rejected because um, I can't hear you, nothing's happening, nothing's changing. And yet we see a really encouraging shift here where he's just saying, if you send your light and your truth um, and that they will guide me and bring me to your holy mountain, he just needs the light and the truth. And I think for all of us, being able to just turn to God being able to read his word, being able to hear his word for some people, just being able to hear. And after a, after a time, you know, I think that that light and that truth starts to really sink into us and light will bring, um, you know, 
revelation about our situation or a calm or a peace, even if the situation doesn't change. And I think that's what we see here. And yet I will praise my Saviour and my God. So I think that this psalm, though it starts off extremely depressing, but I do feel that um, there's something really important about knowing, you know, about us, every one of us, whoever we are, whatever we think and believe, um, that we can come to God. There is a real personal connection and he can take all of that emotion, all of that feeling, um, but there is something really encouraging at the end of this psalm, you know, when he talks to his soul, and yet I will praise him. So I really hope that kind of reading through this psalm today, just looking at that and thinking that despite, despite the difficulty, and I'm not saying that glibly because I know the situations that we're in today for many, many of us, um, I'm just trying to really encourage anybody to kind of look and think about taking those things, those feelings to God, who can, um, who can listen despite how you're feeling, and be encouraged really um, that despite how you're feeling, God can take that and, um, and, and can bring calm and peace to our souls, which, um, which is what it's saying. So. So that's my feeling on the psalm, really, this uh, this very short psalm. Like I said, if there's anything that you've got, put in the comments, anything new or any different thoughts about that. So uh, I'd like to finish this vlog by just praying and um, just thanking God. Father God, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for this psalm. Thank you, Lord, for the real truth in this. Thank you for the encouragement, Lord, that we can come to you when we're feeling extremely vulnerable or depressed and anxious and sometimes feeling rejected, Lord, that you can just hear us and take that, Lord, and bring us to a place where we can feel calmer and be encouraged. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you all. Goodbye.